OK, the time has finally come to start having a look at programming in C++ on a Raspberry Pi. If we're interested in more professional game development, then we probably need to move on from Python. And C++ is probably the most common programming language used in the development of game engines, not necessarily used by people who are programming using game engines. They might not actually touch C++, but it will be used particularly by people who are creating game engines. And if you're interested in game development in low level graphics programming, then C or C++ are going to be the programming languages that you will be working with. So let's have a look at how we can use a Raspberry Pi to create C++ programs. Now, Raspberry Pi runs on Linux, which is a Unix type operating system, which have a rich intertwined history with the C programming language and then laterally onto the C++ programming language. And that basically means that Raspberry Pi will have the compilers you need to compile C or C++ programs already as part of the system. In terms of a graphical development environment for writing your C++ programs, then the Guinea Programmers Editor, which we covered earlier in one of the previous videos, can be used to create programs for a wide range of programming languages, and that will include C++. So I can create my Hello World program and type it in using the Guinea Editor. I've actually got one that I created earlier, so I'm going to open my file hello world and i'm not going to try teaching c in this video so if you understand c or are familiar with programming languages you should see here that we have a simple program with a single function it's a kind of elaborate hello world program that's also got a function included so it's going to print hello world but it's also going to print out the maximum value from two values that are stored in the program with this program in guinea we can see we've got some nice code highlighting in terms of the colors and fonts used so we can easily see where we have for example strings highlighted in yellow values here in green or keywords are in blue and i can just build this project so it's built that successfully and I can try and execute it and see what happens. And it's opened a terminal window and run the program for us. So it seems to work fantastic so far, but it is perhaps more oriented towards working in, in files. It does have the ability to create and work with projects as well. But in the C++ world, there's a little bit more manual work involved than we might expect if you're not used to this. And to demonstrate this, let's look at what happens if we work with a project that's got multiple files as part of it. And so now I have a project that has multiple files. So let's open all of these. I have my main file with the main function and it's still going to call the max function, but note that max is actually in a separate file so it doesn't need to be for this project it's a very small project but in any large program we will start to need multiple files with different functions and different parts of the code so this is a simple example of that and we have the header file which has the function declaration for that max function and we would want to be able to just use the build menu to build and run this if i try and build this project and I get an error message because the function max hasn't been defined anywhere. There's no function max for it to run. Okay, so maybe I should try running this first and build this file first. So if I build the max function first, I've now got an error trying to compile that because there's no main function in that file. So what I can do to work around that is go back to my terminal. If I change to the folder where my project is, let me check, I've got the project files there. Then I can type in the call to run the compiler and just give it the correct parameters it needs to compile this using all of the files. So G++ is the name of the compiler, minus O to indicate the output file name. So I'm going to output an executable file called hello world2 and my input files are going to be hello main.cpp and max.cpp. Minus I is going to tell me which folder I'm going to use to save the results and dot means this current folder that I'm in just now. So it's run, it's not said anything, but if I look there and type ls, I can see I've got a new file in this folder called hello world2. And so I can run that typing dot slash hello world2. 
there we go we can see that's worked now we can imagine that this is going to start getting quite clunky if i have to type that every time i want to test my program and as my multi-file projects get larger it's going to get very unwieldy so there's a solution for this and that's to use something called a make file and make files were the bane of my life as an undergraduate student um, and i was very happy using ides that sort of removed the need for me to work with make files i was certainly quite happy to see them go so the make file for this project would look something like this and there are lots of options with make files and different ways we can do things to improve efficiency but this will work to get us started and at this point it's very important that the next character i type is a tab and again this was one of the reasons why i hated working with make files as an undergraduate sometimes the tabs on the systems i was using didn't always seem to get recognized as tabs so if you just try four spaces you'll probably have problems they're very picky so again i'm naming the output so this is the command I typed in the terminal a little while ago. And I'm going to save this now. I'm going to save this in the same folder. And I'm just going to call this, I'm going to save this as make file. So just like that, make file, no extension. So let's come here and let's remove the project output that we already had. And let's see what happens when we run our make file. So there's different ways we can do this. If I'm in the folder in terminal, I can just type make and that's it, it's built the project. So let's delete that again. And within Gini, the editor here, if I have the make file open, I can choose make as well. And here it's showing me in the output window that it is run make and the compilation is finished successfully. And if I come back here, the project has indeed built. It is possible to use projects in Gini. It really doesn't do very much other than allow you to create folders to store your projects and with a file that keeps track of which windows and files are open in the editor. It really doesn't do much more than that. So let me open a project that I have. And so this is in my Pi projects folder. And these are actually separate files. It's just a project that I created while testing that is for the same basic program. And let me clear this. And so I have another copy of the project in another folder and that allows me to quickly open all of the files associated with a project. So Gini is a very lightweight editor. It's not as fully featured for some aspects of development as something like Visual Studio may be, but it will allow you to work with C++, with multi-file projects, but you will have to create these make files for any project you have that has more than one file. If you've only got one file, you should be able to use the build menu itself to compile, to build and run projects. I'm actually going to also look in the next video at using Code Blocks Editor as an alternative editor for C, C++ and also Fortran is cross-platform and is one of the many IDEs that is available for Raspberry Pi and it's a bit more Visual Studio like. So if you like me, like having your handheld as you manage projects and having some of the file management in the make system managed for you, then code blocks is probably something to look at. That's all for now. Thank you.